Now, if you follow my channel, you know I've had my ups and downs with Samsung as of late and more downs than ups, that's for sure. And that's because of the Z Fold 2 repair that I have been going through. That fiasco is still not resolved, although there might be some light at the end of the tunnel. I'll do an update in my upcoming live stream uh, very soon, as soon as I get resolution of that issue. But I'm not going to let that affect my channel. I know you want to see the new releases from Samsung, especially the Galaxy Book line that they just released and the Pro line, of course. I have the Galaxy Book Pro 360 here in the studio. I just got it about 24 hours ago, and I've started to put it through its paces. Hey, everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the Galaxy Book Pro 360. Coming up. As we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Samsung. I'm not being sponsored by Samsung. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Samsung is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Samsung. Pricing on the Galaxy Book Pro 360 starts at $1199.99. I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. You can get it in two different sizes, 13.3 inch is what we have here today, or you can go with the bigger 15.6 inch, pretty much the same in terms of the specs, just more screen real estate with the larger display. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a little bit. You get a very compact 65 watt power adapter along with the USB-C cable. You get a setup guide along with some documentation and warranty information as well. And of course you get the S Pen. We'll get into the S Pen in just a little bit. Holding the unit for the first time, and wow, this thing is super thin and extremely light. At 2.29 pounds or 1.04 kilograms, this thing is the ultimate portable machine. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side. We get one USB-C port, and next to that, a Thunderbolt 4 port, which could do data, charge, display out. The benefit of Thunderbolt 4, you can drive multiple 4K monitors or even one 8K monitor if you so choose. Moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader, another USB-C port, and finally a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack. Notably missing, no full-size USB-A port. If you want a USB-A port, check out the Pro version without the 360-degree hinge. Now, to get inside this laptop, remove the four rubber feet on the bottom. Beneath those are four Phillips head screws. Remove that, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice that it has a single fan for cooling, and it also has a 63-watt-hour battery. Now, if you go with the 15-inch version, that'll have a 68-watt-hour battery, just so you know. Now, as far as the battery life and all that, I'll test that in the full review coming very soon. But as far as what's user-upgradable, the SSD is user-upgradable, although you get some very good reads and writes, as you can see from the results here. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. My unit has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. Now it has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. One thing to note, it's Wi-Fi 6E ready. Now the card itself is soldered into the motherboard so you won't be able to upgrade it down the road. But you could also get this with the optional 5G, which is not quite yet available from Samsung. When it is, I'll let everybody know. Okay, let's talk about that display, and it is the star of the show as far as I'm concerned. That is because it has a 13.3-inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That means it is a full HD resolution. Unfortunately, there's no 4K resolution available, and that might be okay because with a 13.3-inch display, that would certainly be overkill, and it would certainly take a hit as far as battery life is concerned. So they decided to go with the full HD, and I'm glad they did because you're going to get much better battery life with this lower resolution. Now, having said that, with the Super AMOLED display, you get those really deep blacks. You get that inky colors on it, really super vibrant colors that pop off the display. It covers the color gamut extremely well, as you can see from the numbers here. This thing is beautiful. It is really awesome as far as this display is concerned. 
Now, there are a couple of downsides to this display. Number one, this is a pretty dim display. It only gets to about 300 nits in terms of brightness. I was hoping it would go much higher. That is not the case. They probably decided to keep it at 300 nits to maximize battery life. And the second thing that I'm not crazy about is that 16 to 9 aspect ratio, whereas the trend for 2021 is to go with either a 3 to 2 aspect ratio or the more popular 16 to 10 aspect ratio that we've been seeing. But there is a big upside when it comes to 16 to 9, and that, of course, is consuming media. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube is simply spectacular on this display. Now, some of you are going to need a larger display to do video editing on. You also want to get the one with the bigger display because that'll also have a numeric keypad. So to crunch numbers, you'll want to go with that bigger device. But you'll get better pixels per inch on the 13.3 inch over the 15.6 inch. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put this into the different modes. You could put it into the tent mode. This is great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube is great in this mode. The same could be said for the stand mode. Of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. This is great for use with the S Pen. Now, the S Pen, as I mentioned earlier, is included at no additional cost. And like other S Pens, this uses the Wacom EMR technology. That means this is battery free and you'll get some really great pressure sensitivity on this. Great for taking notes and sketching out artwork. I'll give you more of an extensive look with the S Pen in the upcoming full review. And for those wondering, there's no silo to store the pen like in years past. They'll have to use the magnetic connection on the lid. It's pretty secure, not the strongest, of course, but it will get the job done for you to store the pen. I would much prefer to have a silo to store the pen. So this is the brand new Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360 here for 2021. Uh, I've got the S Pen here working well so far. I'm not crazy about this webcam. It's only 720p. We're not getting 1080p here. Uh, it'll definitely do the job if you're doing Zoom or you're doing any work from home. Uh, it'll definitely get the job done, but I wouldn't say it's good by any stretch of the imagination. Kind of wish it was 1080p here in 2021. I think that's what we should start to expect. They need to do better. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of the video? What do you think about the microphones? How's the audio? Let me know. The power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. It's Windows Hello Ready. Setup was easy and registered my finger each and every time I used it. It was fast and it worked well. Now, for those wondering, you cannot open the lid with one finger. This is just too light of a device to do that. Now, as far as those hinges are concerned, not the best out there I've ever seen. They're okay, but they are a little bit on the loose side, so keep that in mind. Now, this being such an incredibly thin device, I didn't have high expectations going into this regarding the keyboard. Boy, was I wrong. I'm actually really liking this keyboard despite the shallow nature of the key travel. It has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room and a dimly lit environment. It also does have pretty good tactile feedback and I found it comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. Now, I've only been using this for 24 hours, but so far, I'm impressed. And I'm really liking this precision touchpad. It is really super responsive. Two finger scrolling is buttery smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures work as you'd expect. So far, I'm really loving this touchpad. Notice the bit of play you get on the chassis. That's due to that thin nature and light nature of this device. There are two bottom facing AKG speakers with Dolby Atmos on this laptop. Now I kind of prefer top firing speakers as they get less distortion when they are top firing. That's not what we get here. You do get unfortunately bottom facing speakers. But having said that, I would say these are pretty good in terms of volume, decent mids, and there is some bass. I would say they're good, but not great. Now, this is running the Intel 11th Gen processor, the Core i7-1165G7 with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, along with integrated Iris Hexi graphics. And as you can see from these initial benchmarks, a pretty decent performance, especially when it comes to graphics. I'll go into more depth with the graphics numbers, with the performance of that CPU-GPU combo, and I'll bring that in the full review. Okay, 24 hours in with the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. I'm liking it so far. Love that vivid AMOLED display, although it could be a little bit brighter. It's getting only about 300 nits in terms of that brightness, a little too dim. But as far as the display itself is concerned, it's absolutely gorgeous nonetheless. It's got an attractive design with that beautiful mystic blue finish. Really good battery life so far, but I still need to do my testing on that, but it's looking good so far. 
The S Pen is included, although there is no place to store it on the laptop itself. You'll have to stick it magnetically to the cover. Not a really good solution. It kind of makes me miss that silo for the pen that we got in previous iterations. Now, I noticed that the hinges are a little bit loose and the 720p webcam to me is not acceptable here in 2021. We need to start seeing better webcams with at least 1080p resolution. Now, as far as bloatware, this thing is full of bloatware. I'll talk more about that in my full review. Not a big fan of bloatware. If you watch my channel, you probably know that by now. But so far, this is an impressive, extremely thin and light portable device, and I look forward to putting it through its paces and bring you my full review coming very soon. So what do you think about the Galaxy Book Pro 360? I like it so far, although I'm not crazy about that dim display. It's a gorgeous Super AMOLED display, so don't get me wrong in that regard, but I would like it a little bit brighter. It only comes in at about 300 nits, and I'd like to see it, of course, brighter. That is my preference, and I think a lot of you would probably feel the same. But don't get me wrong, it's still an excellent, gorgeous uh, Super AMOLED display. Nobody does displays like Samsung, and this is no exception. Now, as far as the performance so far, it's looking good. I've only had it for about 24 hours, so I need to do my full testing in terms of that performance, in terms of the thermals, and of course, battery life, which is looking really, really good so far. I know they've made some outlandish claims about battery life, but I am seeing improved battery life in this iteration, so stay tuned. Those numbers will be coming very soon. You can get it in the 13.3 inch, of course, it's a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, as well as that 15.6 inch, also a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. I'm not the biggest fan anymore of 16 to 9, as you know. I am a more of a proponent of 16 to 10 or even 3 to 2, especially on a convertible device. But again, great for consuming media. 16 to 9 is, of course, well optimized for that viewing experience. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.